We, we found this fella on the street who uh, was asking for some help with his pain. He had a very large abscess on his face. Um, he's, of course, very nervous to be in any sort of facility or be kidnapped, anything like that. But he has a lot of pain, so uh, we, we, our goal is to get him into a hospital. He has a large abscess. He needs to be into a hospital. But we sort of need to strike a bargain with him. Uh, with other things that he wants to get him into the hospital. He may not be thinking completely logically. Uh, so he wants to get a shower and new clothes. So we're going to take him to the Ocean Park Community Center to kind of work with what he wants to get our over, over uh, all goal accomplished, which is get him to the emergency room. Do so, we know his identity? He gave us a name, but we don't know if that's a real name or identity, and he was not able to come up with a date of birth, so it may be very hard to identify him. Hey, would you like to come with us in the van? Because we can take you to where the showers and clothes and the clothes are. What's the name of this It's called OPCC. Have you heard of it? OPCC is the access center where you can get some food and some clothes and a shower. Well, is it far from here? No, it's very close. How far? Well, we have a van. How close is it? We have a key there, and then we can take you to the, the doctors. He, if if he doesn't allow us to treat him for this infection, um, I think he could die from this infection. Um, most likely, it's just a large abscess, which is a collection of pus. Um, we saw it was oozing. There was a lot of dead tissue around it. Um, I also worry that it could be cancer or tuberculosis. Um, again, without treatment, it's deadly. But just the infection alone, if, uh, if that doesn't get treated, he could um, develop what's called sepsis, where the infection's in your bloodstream and you die from it. I think it's a spider bite because it just like it swelled up in one day. Bad. From year to year, it hurts really bad. So how long have you had it Like two days. Two days. I've seen the doctor before when I had a really bad cough, remember? And the antibiotics that you gave me helped. They took it away. So we saw Ida a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I treated her for a cough, but uh, she was complaining of an infection in her arm here. So. I don't know the, it's a like really bad swollen. Probably the most uh, prevalent contagious disease that they get infections with is with uh, a normal skin bacteria that we all have. It's just that they are not in an environment that they get their skin washed or protect their skin um, the way we do. So they get a lot more little cuts. They're using drugs, so they're putting needles in their skin. So they get a lot of infections with very common bacteria. So those bacteria would not affect us because we're probably not going to be exposed to the environment that they're exposed to. Um, these bacteria have become resistant and make a lot of news stories, but they're still very common bacteria that most of us probably have living on our skin anyway. So we're really not too afraid of getting exposed to their contagious disease because we're taking care of our skin.
I'm riding my bicycle and something come out of the uh, wind and hit me right in the eye. When did this happen? No, uh, year I was in uh, uh, Harbor General for nine months. And this year I had cataracts, so I put an implant in this one. Usually, you know, you see them for kind of uh, minimal reasons, but upon further questioning, you can kind of dig up some more chronic issues that might need a little bit more intense medical care. So we really try to encourage them to go to the clinic. Um, if they're really ill, we'll bring them to the clinic. Um, I've taken a couple people to the emergency room. All right, see you later. So. But um, yeah, sometimes if you can find the little things that are bothering them, like toe, toe itch or aches and pains, and then ask them if they have other things going on, you might be able to uncover some more uh, chronic and uh, potential life-threatening illnesses. So that's another reason why we're out here, so that we can get them to the clinic or get them the care that they need before it's too late. Yeah, I had brown eyes. They put a green implant in this one. Yeah, I want to get a blood test in the whole nine yards, so... I'll probably do it tomorrow. Susan, I'll go ahead. Those guys are right there. Yeah. I'm just yeah. We're ready to pick up. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Where are we? Oh, Jose, how long have you been on this? Four months. Four months. Four months. Four three. Okay. Okay, we'll take you to the access center, okay? Access center. Yeah, but yeah. We're seven about, blocks. Right? Yeah, but we're gonna give you a ride. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty painful. Okay, so let's get you in the van. Okay, come on. Come, come with me. Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Okay. Oh, oh my yeah. God. she's okay. We see her every week. Y'all just don't want to admit that I'm a doc. I've been here since 1979 on and off. I got all my um, uh, 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 schooling in New York City, and I practice in Emory University in, in Atlanta, Georgia. C? Okay, what's the next letter? You, see you, your last name. How do you pronounce that, Jose? I, what, the itching? Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, that's yeah. why I sleep up myself. You know, I don't yeah. like to stay in the Okay. Sometimes even if you know you don't need to go to psychiatry or other things, you know, sometimes read a letter in order not to reach in jail, you know, to be seen by a medical commission with no reasons, you know. Or just to have someone to talk to. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I talk to a lot of people. The best way is to get your blood pressure treated. The best way is to get you into our clinic, okay? Yeah, I know. I hate that. So hopefully you can make it over there. I'll try. I can't promise you. Can do a few you. more testing. No, I don't want any promises. Just that's, I know. That's I know. I don't know. To you. That's the way. But I mean, if there's anything else I can help you out with today. But your blood pressure is high. It's not dangerously high right now. No, thank God for that. So. Um, if you have any chest pains, get yourself on over to the emergency room, okay? Okay. All right, Johnny. Okay. All right. All right, thanks, sir. Medicine, I give you a doctor. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so finally I had to go to the hospital. I've been hanging in this guy. Got down in the way. I got over that medicine. I want to see my friends. No, three times. And I think what what not just being homeless, but I think what complicates the situation the most is his mental illness issue. And um, 
just not really trusting other people, not really understanding the need to take care of this. Um, and I think that's probably the largest issue that we deal with is dealing with the mental illness aspects of, of everyone's, if they have any, you know, any other illnesses, it's dealing with the mental illness problem first. Um, to really get them to understand how important it is to take care of their health. and But you want to treat the mental illness part too, which they're usually not agreeable to that. Often they don't think they have a mental illness issue, so it's hard. I work in the Venice Family Clinic seeing similar patients um, in an office setting, but they're much higher functioning patients who are able to actually make it into a medical office. I see. And what are the most common ailments here on the streets? You see a lot of people with a cough because they've been out in the environment, even though it's much milder and violent environment in California. But you're going to see people who are complaining that they have a cough that they can't get rid of, so they're unable to sleep in a warm place at night. So that's a pretty common complaint. Tuberculosis is something that we see more in developing countries, um, but in the United States, um, we see it more in homeless population um, and Los Angeles having the highest homeless population. It's pretty prevalent in Los Angeles compared to the rest of the country. Um, and uh, there's actually a public health is uh, very um, stringent um, in finding people who have tuberculosis and making sure they're they're treated. Have you um, found any? Yes. Yes. As and what do you do when you mm -hmm. find a case of TB? Uh, when you send them to the emergency room to yeah. be hospitalized. But it also depends on if they're coughing. If someone has tuberculosis and they're coughing, they're very contagious. But if they have tuberculosis and they're not coughing, they're not contagious. So it's really up to the physician in the emergency room or at the hospital to decide if they're going to hospitalize someone who has uh, tuberculosis. But usually, if someone's coughing, um, they'll hospitalize them until they've had some antibiotics to where, enough to where they're not contagious anymore. Um, there's a lot of people out there in great need of medical attention that don't have the ability to either transport themselves to the Venice Family Clinic or a lot of people, and you'll see this, um, have a lot of foot and leg problems from being on the streets and having to walk so much that they're not able to get themselves to the Venice Family Clinic. So we take what we call street medicine to them, and it has been, it has been a great success. I came here in, 1980, in 1984 and well, I didn't speak English at all, I, I was just a tourist and then I decided to stay but all of a sudden one day my son got sick in the park and a lady told me about the clinic. I didn't know about this clinic but I found something very good because people was uh, speaking my own language and they treated me so nice so I, we became patients and then after being patients I decided to volunteer uh, th that was 23 years ago, and now I'm a staff for almost uh, 11 or 12 years. Uh, tell me about the patients here. Okay. What, what kind of patients do you have? Well, oh, we see patients from all backgrounds, uh, from different ethnicities. We see, we see uh, children, uh, adults, 
homeless patients and they come with all kind of um as I said, backgrounds, they're ill, they're, they have no house, um, they, are, they don't speak English, some of them. So it's a very interesting place to work at. Are your patients very sick when they come here? No, that's, um, usually not. We're not an emergency room. It's not like, um, you know, with some exceptions where we, but they're actually pretty sick as far as chronic diseases go. Um, Thursdays and Fridays. The majority of our contributors, even though they are famous in Hollywood, they do not need any kind of publicity. Uh, they do not seek it out, and we're very grateful to their contributions. Over a third of our budget comes from private individuals. One of our uh, donors, Larry King, makes it possible for a patient of ours, uh, any patient with a serious heart problem, can go to Cedar sinai Hospital and receive the most complicated, delicate surgery at no cost, thanks to Larry King. We are running here for many years a program of rehabilitation of torture victims. Uh, people who come to the United States from different countries they have been tortured in their countries and then we do the rehabilitation of them and trying to get political asylum. When we began uh, around almost 26 years ago, most of our uh, victims came from Latin America, especially Central America or South America and Chile and Argentina. But in this moment, most of them, uh, around 50, 60 percent, are coming from Africa. He, what he, he's currently in the shower. We've just got him some clothing. We're going to have security keep an eye on him. And when he's finished, he'll, he will give us a call. He won't let him out of his sight so we can transport him to the hospital. You're going to take him to the hospital? Yes, in this van. No, in the van. We're going to go to the hospital. Okay, I'm going to get that. Oh, wait, go ahead. Go ahead. He's oozing a little. Okay, I'm going to get him a jacket. Can you get a, uh, some tissue? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Jose. We can God go. Okay. Did you you feel better after your shower? Yeah? Okay. So remember we talked about going to see some doctors for your neck? What about my neck? What about your neck or your jaw, I mean? You've got this big infection on your jaw. And um, I think you have I don't know, but you definitely need you definitely need some medicine for it, yeah? Alright. Okay. So we'll work for the medicine. The medicine for the infection. You up for that? Yes. Okay. And if they want if they want you to stay in the hospital, how would you feel about that? Because they would give you some, you would I don't get a, have to go. Exactly, they give you a clean place to stay. Okay. Yeah, they give you your back is hurting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Give you a massage. That's not in my job description. Yeah. Okay. okay. But the thing is, you know, nowadays everybody should realize it's either if you are in big trouble, you know, and it's not your fault. It's either you run away, you take the chance because you know that they might come after you, but they might come home. You know, the situation is so bad. You know? And the people in the street just say, oh my god, what the
You're cold? We need. We need to get in. The bag is in the floor. You got the flu? You said. You better be at the hospital. Santa Monica Hospital. Okay. Where they have said, really nice doctors there. Ten blocks. Yeah. Ten blocks. Okay. Okay. They let you smoke. They'll let you smoke not right away, but once you get settled, then you can uh, no, smoke your cigarette. You stay there. Well, it depends on the doctors, but I'm hoping that they'll let you stay there a few days so that they can get some medicine in you so that the infection can get better. I go to just medicine only for the infection. Yep, that's what I'm saying. Medicine for the infection and maybe even for pain. Okay. Okay? Yes. And I have to come back over here. Oh, where do I go? When you're done uh -huh. with the hospital, yeah, you can come back to the access center. Yeah, well, you have, we just gave you a blanket right here. Alright. Oh, this drinks too much. Ah, this is here. This is the, this is where we're going to walk in through those doors and mm -hmm. sit, sit in the waiting room. Okay. Oh, we're going to wait. No, you won't have to wait too long. The it's not that bad here. Come on, Jose. So, so I told you when we get you in there, we can get you some good medicine for your pain, okay? Yeah. And uh, that's the main thing. We get your pain treated, and then they'll get that fixed up, okay? The medicine, I hope it don't take too long. It won't take too long. Right, right. Susie's gonna be with you in there, okay? I don't like to be. I don't like to be sure. We saw a lot of very common things that were very inconsequential and we saw a guy that was potentially very sick and we had to do the best we could to try to talk him into going into the hospital and get that, that infection in his face treated. So, uh, we had to coerce him a little bit with the cigarette out front and uh, we finally got him in there and who knows what, if he will stay but we hope that he'll stay in there and get treated. You see these homeless people on, on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. We yeah. see them in the clinic as well. But these are probably the sicker of this. Sex. Is there something big that should be done? Mm. Like uh, dealing with mental illness on a big, grander scale, I think. And also, when you talk about homelessness, probably the most important thing is uh, getting them housing. 
Um, but a lot of a lot of times when you're dealing with mental illness, um, even if there's housing available, it's hard for them to accept the housing um, if that's available. So I would think that the if there's a big cure for everything that we've been seeing, that we'd have um, more aggressive mental health care. Thank you.